Hey everyone, welcome back to the Man Cave with Big Kev. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is part seven of the emergency box kit and we're gonna go over hygiene today. This is probably, in my opinion, the most important stage of the emergency box. So let's get into it. All right, so hygiene. This is probably the most important part of your kit. So I'm gonna go over a few things here, but first I wanna go over a scenario with you guys. And because I've lived it, the 2011 floods really did bring with it a lot of uh, infection and all that sort of stuff while people were cleaning up the mess that uh, was in its wake. So the things you have to think about are, you know, houses, shopping centers, all went underwater, cars, the whole works. So you've got rotten food, you've got oil and grease and whatever else is coming out of those cars, and you've also got decomposing animals in that water as well, from animals that have been caught up in the floods. So with that, the potential for getting sick is extreme. And it did happen, a lot of people got mass infections because uh, they couldn't clean themselves properly. Uh, they'll get a cut while cleaning up and it just it's just not a good day for anybody, especially with such harsh germs. Now, we do use antibacterial wipes in the home and I'm a firm believer that keeping your bench tops not so clean is okay because then you build the immunity to those sorts of uh, bacterias and whatnot. But when it comes to natural disasters, it's a completely different story. You have to be on your A game with cleanliness. So let's get into it and we'll cover a few things. Let's start with a toiletry kit. This is gonna house your basics in here. This is what I take with me to go camping. So it's pretty much just toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, and uh, some mouthwash. Um, a couple of other things here. I've got a bar of soap and uh, oh, some beard balm, look at that. So this is the one that I take camping. However, if you go to the shops, uh, Woolworths have got them. They're a little kit that comes for about $10 and you'll get a toothbrush, toothpaste, floss and mouthwash in that little kit. So 10 bucks per person for a kit each, chuck it in your emergency box and you'll be right as rains. Deodorants and antiperspirants. Now there are, is a big difference between the two. So a deodorant is pretty much just a spray that's gonna mask what smell is already there. An antiperspirant is what you want because that's gonna help you to, uh, it's gonna prevent you from sweating so much and it's just gonna keep you cleaner for longer. It's also gonna, also gonna help you with preventing chafe and all that sort of stuff as well. So an antiperspirant is what you want. Um, I use the Rexona, it's very, very good and I highly recommend Rexona Roll-On. You can get stick or you can even get dry spray as well. So I think that's a must. In regards to towels, um, there's really no point in folding up a massive towel and taking up room in your emergency box when you can buy something like this. Now this is a microfiber towel and it packs up so small and I'll just show you what kind of size you get with this type of towel. Camping stuff is really, really good for emergency kits because they, they make stuff small and lightweight. So that's your towel. And that's ample for drying yourself off for 72 hours. They quick dry and they're very easy to clean. So very highly recommended there. This one was from Aldi, I think it was like $8 or something. So um, this one here is from BCF. I got this for, I got three for $10. They were on special, they're usually about $10 each. That just unclips from the pouch and you've got a nice little microfiber cloth there for washing your face and hands and whatever else. Or you could even buy a couple of these and keep one for a dishcloth or what have you. Okay, wipes. 
Wipes are a very good idea because they're already wet, you don't have to use your water source to be able to use them, and they can get you through a 72 hour period. Just washing those grimy areas, the sweaty areas, so under your armpits, in your groin, um, under your neck, all those sorts of places that are gonna build up dirt and get sweaty. Uh, you really wanna make sure that those areas are clean um, because what will happen is the moisture will soften your skin up and you will uh, rub the skin off and that's how you can get sores and potentially get nasty infections. I'll go over the soap next. No, oh, actually, no we won't. We'll carry on with wipes. You can go to Woolworths, um, I only say Woolworths because we shop there, uh, but go to the shopping center and you can buy some antibacterial wipes. Those are going to be good for washing down your surfaces as well. Uh, so keep on top of cleaning your stuff because you don't want to get sick. We'll move on to soap. This is just a normal hand soap. I recommend that you have maybe both normal hand soap and antibacterial soap. I don't recommend using antibacterial soap all the time because it does strip all the oils out of your skin. It can dry your hands and your hands can crack in. So it's a really good idea to have yourself a nice um, general soap just so that you can um, use it in between. Uh, hand gels, the hand sanitizer gels are also very good. You, after small tasks, you can use this instead of using up your water source to wash your hands. Um, I do recommend that if you are processing meat or food or anything like that, you wash your hands properly with soap instead of just using this here. I'm not a great fan of this. I do use it, but I'm not a great fan of it because yes, germs are alive and then you go and kill them and are still on your hands dead, which means you've got little germ corpses on your hands. I, I'm just one for washing them away. I just like running water. So that's just me, but I will use it if I need to. Uh, also very good just to squirt on something and use a, a wipe and then wipe the surface area down and just use that for cleaning as well. Okay, let's move on to rubbish. Keeping your rubbish in one spot instead of sprawled out everywhere, you don't want to be littering and adding to the problem. So this is a wheelie bin liner. These are very big and we've gone through these a number of times in different videos for the multi-purpose uses of these bags. You can pick up these bags at Bunnings. I think they were $10 for 20 of them. Uh, they're very heavy duty, robust things and it's good to keep a number of them. They come in a roll of 10, two rolls of 10 in a box. So chuck a roll in your box and you should be apples. And that'll take care of all your rubbish issues. Mozzie wipes or insect wipes or spray, AeroGuard, off, all those sort of things. A very good idea. Um, you can imagine the mosquitoes carrying dengue fever or whatever other gross stuff that they've been breeding in with floodwaters. You don't want to get it through getting bitten by a mosquito. It's so easy to happen in those sorts of situations. So these ones here are in uh, low scent. It doesn't say natural, but I don't really care. But there are natural options out there if you don't like the idea of chemicals being on you. But I've used these and they're pretty good. I don't mind them at all. Uh, portable shower is also a really good idea as well. These things just roll out. Um, this is a solar shower. You can fill that up with water, stick it on the roof of your car. If it's sunny, it'll heat the water up to some extent. And then you've got warm to hot water for showering. Uh, also another very good multi-use item. If you put the tap on there and you close it up, you can also uh, transport water with it as well. Coming back to waste for a little bit, 
you can really reduce the amount of waste that you use depending on what materials you're using up. If you're using up uh, plastic packets of chips and uh, all that sort of stuff, chuck them in your bag. But as for wipes and cardboard and paper, they make for really good fire starting equipment as well. So you can just burn that and it won't be a problem. You're gonna reduce the amount of waste that you're keeping at, at your site. So that's another really good idea is to just burn it off. Also, if it's winter, you're gonna be creating heat um, and also you're gonna have tinder there as well. So one thing I don't have in front of me right now is a manicure kit it's for your fingernails and your toenails. Keeping the underneath of your fingernails clean, I think is paramount. So a really nice uh, stiff nail brush that you can clean under your nails is gonna be fantastic. Uh, the manicure kit's just for the nail clippers and the scissors, uh, good multi-use items as well. So keeping your hands clean is going to be paramount. A bucket. So you could carry a, uh, a bucket for transporting water or bathing or whatnot, or alternatively, you could use your emergency box. It is a vessel, you just have to empty it out, fill it up with water and you've got bathing water. With bathing, I would fill up a bucket of water and I would just use the water out of that bucket and make sure that water doesn't go back in it. You wanna clean that stuff off you and have clean water there to rinse. So you're not transferring germs into your clean water. So that is pretty much it that I wanna cover for this video. The rain is starting. I'm not sure how well you can hear me right now, but for the, most ex uh, the more experienced guys, please, Put your comments down there and um, and share your knowledge this is only a few things that you can do to look after your hygiene it is the most important thing that you're going to want to take care of uh, obviously ladies your sanitary needs are also going to go in your box as well if you have such a kit like that just chuck it in there and you'll be fine so thank you very much for watching this episode ladies and gentlemen i hope to see you on facebook and instagram as well Stay tuned for the next episode and until then, thank you and see you later.